Wood for our service tonight, our lesson tonight. Start reading with verse number one, 15, one of John, Jesus talking. I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch, branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. Now he tells them they're clean through the words he has spoken. Now, that, now he comes and says, abide in me. And you're clean, you've been clean, you've been cleansed. Now abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gathereth them and casteth them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If the Lord will give me a few minutes, and you'll give me a few minutes, I'm going to try to bring a thought tonight, staying connected, staying connected, sing a chorus, Rebecca, lift your hands, lay your Bibles down if you want to, walk to and just lift your hands and love you, God, we came to worship you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, God, we came to worship you, Lord, thank you, Lord, God, I appreciate you tonight, bless the message, Bless the messenger in the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. You can be seated. God bless you. We are living in a country, a world for that matter, that is probably more connected uh, than anyone could imagine in our day. 20 years ago or about, there about, maybe, maybe more, it was... Uh, Pretty much every family, every home had a uh, a phone, some type. <coughs> this is gonna be a good one. I can tell. I can feel it coming up. A uh, phone of some kind to make. How many remembers the old party lines? You might remember that. You know, you had to wait till somebody else got through talking before you could call, and you was blessed if you didn't get uh, have some ratchet jaw on your line. Because if you did, you, you would have never got your phone. Uh, some of you don't remember that, but I, I remember. Now, we didn't even have a phone, but I remember that. I remember people talking about it. We was one of those families that was not blessed to have a phone, or maybe we was one of those families that was blessed not to have a phone. Maybe that's what it was. But we didn't have a phone in our home. But it was a common thing for most families 10 to 20, 30 years ago, whatever, to have what to call a landline phone in the home. It was for it was for being connected. You could you could call your families, or you could call whatever. Having a phone in every home seemed to be the going thing for just about uh, uh, around the whole world. They used to uh, there used to be. I don't even think they have a pay phone booth anymore. I haven't seen one. I can't recall seeing. Used to you could just drive, especially in Atlanta, a smaller town like Covington and so forth, and, and for that matter, go to uh, Memphis and so on, uh, that you could find on, on a lot of corners a phone booth, and you could stop. And I can remember the time, and I'm sure some of you can, that uh, you could make a phone call for a dime. Yeah. It cost you 10 cents to yeah. make a phone call. Now, the young people don't got a clue about that because they don't know what I'm talking about, and I say a phone booth. Uh, it, it, they was everywhere. You could call and, and just use the phone as long as you wanted, wanted to. And uh, that, was a, that was a way of being connected. You could, you could make phone calls. It's called being connected. Now, when I'm preaching tonight, what I'm talking about tonight, I'm not really talking about that kind of a connection. I'm talking about being connected to God. Being, you know, having, you, having your 
uh, having yourself uh, connected by the presence of God, staying connected. I could talk tonight about the church, uh, and I think it's very important that you stay connected to your church. I think it's very important, even if you can't be at church for whatever the reason, whether you're sick, lame, or lazy, uh, I, whatever it is, that you, that you stay connected to it. You know, make connections. Right. And, and uh, I, I, I hear most of our ladies, a lot of our ladies, they have, a, they have a, I don't know what they call it, but they're connected together. They send text messages and emails or whatever. And uh, if something's going on, then, then they can pass it on to the ladies. And it's called being connected. Uh, you're connected with your sisters and, and your brothers and so forth. And I believe that's very important. I, I believe uh, it's important, especially the hour that we're living in. Uh, this, in the last couple of years, you know, it's been so much going on. It's been so much, uh, uh, many times, church doors had to be closed. Uh, even our church was closed for, I don't know, a couple of weeks, seems like, all total, at least. And uh, But we stayed, We tried to stay connected. I tried to send text messages to those that receive text messages. And, and for those that don't, I try to remember to call at least once a week or maybe once every couple of weeks to make a phone call just to say, I was praying for you, thinking about you, and wanted to make sure everything was okay. It's called trying to stay connected. Trying to keep the church connected to one another. You don't want people to stray. You don't want people to get away from being connected with their brothers and their sisters and their church. You want people to feel like that I, if I, I can't, might not can be there, uh, we might not can have the doors open, but at least we can, we can be connected by, by email or, or text messages or whatever it is. Uh, at least we can make that connection. But that's really not the connection I'm talking about tonight either. I'm not talking about being, and I, I believe in that. I believe it's essential that you stay connected to your church and that you ought to know you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't wonder what's going on. You ought to know what's going on. Uh, if you don't know, go to Facebook. I guarantee you it's on Facebook. Everything in Tiffany County is on Facebook. That's all, or, in fact, everything in Tennessee is on Facebook. Uh, and so if you don't know what's going on, you, you just go on there and you start looking around. And, and you'll find and, and, and that you uh, things are happening. I've had people ask me, when are we going to do such and such? And we just did it, you know. And that's obvious they weren't very connected. You see what I'm saying? But, but on the same hand, I'm talking about being connected to Jesus. Stay connected to the Lord Jesus. Teenagers use phones. It's almost like a lifeline to them. Uh, matter of fact, you know, you, I can, you can get just plumb aggravated when you see the uh, way things are done with, with teenagers, moms and dads as well, uh, about with a cell phone. Many people you, you got, got into this using pagers uh, to stay connected. And I never had a pager. I, I think I know how they work. Uh, you call this number and that pager says beep, beep, and somebody starts watching this backing up. You know, <laughs> But it's, it's beeping you to tell you you're getting a phone call. Are you understanding? So that's a type of being connected with someone as anyone that knows your phone number can be connected with you. Then came the cell phone. And a cell phone comes along now, and uh, boy, they are something else, I'm telling you. Uh, a cell phone, uh, you, can, you, can, you can send email, or, or you can send text messaging, uh, so it moved from just having a cell phone, like a little flip phone that I carried for years when everybody <coughs> thought that I should carry a, a, a regular a phone. I thought it was a regular phone. Um, but uh, then it moved from just a cell phone to like your email and you can send pictures and you can, I can't because I don't know how, but you can. You can send movies and you can, and then, then what they call inst instant messaging uh, is that is that my pronouncing that right now? Then I don't know what that is. I know it sounds to me like there's a message instant. You can just get right straight to them. That's what it sounds to me like. People are getting. <coughs> I'm sorry, y'all. <coughs> People can get news 24 hours a day on their cell phone. Uh, they can get uh, the, the weather. You can look at the weather. I was looking at the weather this afternoon. My wife and I was trying to figure out. Uh, if what, which way the storms were going, we was watching the little, little video thing of the weather. 
and you can get sports around the clock. Uh, it's called being connected. Uh, but let me tell you my opinion, this whole connection thing in this, in this sense has gone crazy. It's gotten out of control. But that's not what I'm talking about tonight. I'm not talking about being connected with your church through uh, emails and so forth. I'm talking about Jesus had washed the disciples' feet. Okay? We find this in the story. And then he explained to them that he was going to die. Now stay with me. Just give me 15 or 20 minutes. And I, I promise I'll get out of here. And then he predicted Peter's denial. He said, you're going to deny me this night before the cock crows. You're going to deny that you even know me. He predicted that. Then he heads toward Gethsemane. Okay, now here we find now this story. Jesus speaks these words. I don't know. I think it, uh, one commentary writer said it was in the Garden of Gethsemane that this, com that this uh, unfolded, that he, he hooks up and he says, I am the true vine. And the commentary writer suggested, now this is not scripture, but he suggested that they were looking at some grapevines there in the, in the edge of the Garden of, of Gethsemane. And he said this, he said, uh, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. All through the New Testament, Jesus used real life examples to explain things. He, he just, you know, he spoke in parables. Looking at these grapevines, we'll call it, looking at them, they understood, they saw what he meant when he said that, about the, talked about the true vine. These vines were coming up out of the ground. And, and the, the, the vine was, and then as it comes up, it gets watered by the water of the, of the, of the rain. And as it comes up, then branches break off from these, from these grapevines. There's branches. And on the branches <clears throat> are uh, fruit. And uh, now, again, let me, let me explain what I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about winning souls. This is not what this conversation is about. We ought to win souls. We ought to be a witness. We ought to talk to people. But he's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. He said, I'm the vine, ye are the branches. You can't bear the fruit without me, without me being that So. Galatians 5 tells you the fruit of the Spirit. Joy, peace, and love, and gentleness, and meekness, and kindness, and so on. He tells you about the fruit of the Spirit. So he predicts this, and he tells them that I am the vine. Looking at this, they saw, they understood what he meant. It was where the water was absorbed from the ground through the vine to the branches that made the branches produce the fruit. Am I making any kind of sense to you? In the Old Testament... The nation of Israel was often compared to a vine. The Bible said in Psalms 80 and 8, Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. In the book of Isaiah, we read where the nation of Israel is likened to a vineyard that does not produce fruit. And so Jesus is saying, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will bear fruit. He's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. If you, if you are abiding in Christ, then the fruit of the Spirit will abide in you. There will be love. There will be peace. There will be joy. There will be... Uh, uh, somebody read it for me. Put it on the screen if you would. Uh, Brother Mark, uh, chapter 5 of Galatians, I believe it is. Uh, maybe verse 22. See if that's, what it, if that's what it says. Let me look at it right quickly. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. This is the fruit, in my opinion, that Jesus was talking about. He said, if you abide in me, these fruits are going to abide in you. You're going to have peace. You're going to have joy. You'll, you'll be long-suffering. You're going to be gentle, goodness, faith. One more time, Brother Martin. Meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And so, a, that, now, but it said that a branch cannot bear, we the branches, we can't bear that fruit unless we're connected to the vine. Right. Because Jesus is the vine. Right. This is what he's talking about. He encouraged his disciples here to stay, to, to, he reminded them to stay in him 
No branch, he says, can bear fruit of itself. It must remain in the vine. If, if I'm going to live for God, if I'm going to bear that kind of fruit, I've got to stay connected to the true vine, which is Jesus Christ. He said every branch that does not bear fruit is cut off, and every branch that does bear fruit is pruned to, do, to bear more fruit. A branch that is not connected is already dead. Listen carefully to me. Just like you took a real flower, a real big, nice flower out in your yard and took a pair of scissors or cutters and you cut you off a real pretty red rose off of that, off of that rose bush, that rose that you cut off is dead. It's just waiting to wither. Right, right. You kill that rose. Right. That rose will never produce the rose uh, the uh, other flowers will produce. Right. It's just waiting to be burned, the writer said, because it, it's worthless. You take a child of God that's not connected to God, they're already dead. They're just waiting to wither away. This is what Jesus is teaching us in this lesson here tonight. If you, if you bear fruit, you're going to have to be connected. You can't, be, you can't produce the fruit of the Spirit without being connected to the main vine, which is Jesus Christ. We can do good works. We can feed the poor. And, and we can we can give to the church. We can do a lot of things, but we cannot bear the fruit of the Spirit unless we're connected to the vine. To have the fruit of the Spirit, you've got to have the Spirit. Is anybody understanding what I'm saying? Just like that flower that you cut off. Jesus is telling them that if they stay connected. I was yesterday sometime... I don't know what morning it was, sometime yesterday. I think it was when I was coming home on my school bus. Uh, that thought just come to me. Being, staying connected. Staying connected. And man, thoughts got to run through my brain like you wouldn't believe. Uh, Jesus is telling us that if they stay connected, he's telling you, and he's telling me, if we will stay connected to him, if, they, if we will acknowledge our dependency in him, that I can't do nothing without Christ. I'm nothing. He will give us that that we need if we'll stay connected. There is no one, nobody, who can do the things of God without being connected to Jesus Christ. That's just, it just goes out. And that would be acceptable unto God. Jesus said, I am the vine. He explains that our relationship with God is just like a grape vine, just like the branch is connected to the vine. Right. Pull the branch off, you got nothing. The branch is dead right. Right. at that particular time. <clears throat> we have to stay connected. The, the pruning, now that's something we don't like. The pruning is not enjoyable. But the pruning is not judgment. The pruning is not punishment. The pruning is for growth. You take a rose bush or a, a grapevine or something of that order, uh, those uh, uh, great myrtle trees that, that I trimmed down below the ground because I got tired of climbing. Uh, we had to prune those trees every year. You prune grapevines. I don't know if you have to prune those every year or not. I'm sure you do. And it, it's not to hurt them. It's to help them produce more, more limbs or more branches. 
Are you understanding? It produces more fruit. If you prune grapevines, then your grapevines will produce more grapes. It's not to punish or to hurt, but it's to cause betterment for the plant. It's to help the plant. Then we come to all the ifs that the scripture uses here. All the ifs. The word if is the biggest little word you know. If, if. If a man remains in me, if a man remains in me, he will bear much fruit. He will bear much fruit apart from me, Jesus said. You can't do nothing. And so if I, if I had called, if I had, you see, it, the word if just about, I'm going to say 99% of our disappointments our letdowns and our failures began with if, uh -huh. if, if I had a called, if I had a prayed, if I had known, if I had listened. Just about every every area is starts with if. If I could do it over, if I could preach that, if I could call that sermon back. I told about a story about a pastor who preached a sermon. And said he got through preaching, he got so carried away, just running and jumped in the baptistry. And got out of the baptistry and resigned. I said, somebody told him, said, you ought to kept that message in your briefcase. <laughs> if I hadn't have preached that message, if I hadn't have did this, Jesus is telling them, if, 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 if I really believe, how many's ever heard that one from the enemy? You pray for your family, you pray for yourself, your, your sick kids, and you pray for yourself, or you pray for a situation, you pray about a problem, and it gets worse. And then the devil says, if you really believed, if you really was what you say you are, I'm still talking about staying, staying connected. If you really had the goods, if you was really, uh, see, the battles I fight pertains to you guys, this church, number one, and then also my own family. Well, if you was the preacher, you ought to be, after almost 50 years, you know, you wouldn't have these problems. You'd have a church filled with people. I go to conferences, and I, and I ought to get encouraged and come back discouraged. Because everybody else has been in church, been in that particular, particular building two years. They're running 400, and every Sunday they baptize 25 or 30. Duh. If. If I really had it. Are well, you understanding what I'm saying? That word, if, is the biggest little word in the whole world. And it's in front of everything we do. If you remain in me, Jesus said. And my word remains in you or abides in you. If a man believes in Jesus or if he believes not, if, 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 we fight that word. And remember this. Remember, if you are attached to the vine, Jesus, if you choose to live as he would have you to live, listen carefully to me. I'm about through. I'm about finished. I have one thing with those stopping up on me. Then you are probably most likely, you're going to have the same, you're not going to have the same desires and the same wants as a person living that's not connected to the vine. If you're really connected and you really, really uh, want to live for God, tooth and toenail, your wants and your desires are going to be different. I can use myself as an example. I hate to, but uh, I'm the only one I really know me. I'm the only one that really knows me. I can use myself. When I come to the Lord, I got the Holy Ghost. My wife will tell you, my entire life took a, took a turn. I've I done an about face. Nobody told me a lot of things. Nobody told me how to dress. I already knew how to dress. I didn't dress like an idiot to start with. Before I got to church, I dressed like a man. I walked like a man. I talked like a man. I believed I was a man. 
I didn't have to. Die. I didn't have to go through. I didn't have to go through a sex change. I, I wouldn't want to. I kind of like being a man. Are you understanding? I like being a daddy and a granddaddy and a husband. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to go through life wondering if I made a mistake, if I, if I should or not have changed. And I don't want to do all that mess. That's ridiculous. When I came to God, my entire life changed. I quit smoking. I quit drinking. I quit cussing. I quit chewing tobacco. I quit going honky tonking. I quit going to horse shows on Sunday. I quit going fishing on Sunday. I just I did, nobody told me to. I just quit. You know why I quit? Because my desire changed. I got connected to the right vine, and my desires and my walk tos changed. I wanted to go to church. Amen. I wanted to go to the house of God. I wanted to go with my wife and my two daughters. To the house of God and see what was all about, what's going on down there. I wanted to be there. I wanted to be a part of it. I, I didn't want to go to these other places. I, I didn't. I didn't want to go back to Ching John down on Jackson. I didn't want to drink Jack Daniel's whiskey no more. That was it. Pastor never got on to me. He never said, "Now, brother John, you got to quit drinking. You got to quit doing." Never ever. You know what? It was a change of walk to. I got connected to the right vine. You know why people don't straighten up their act? They didn't get connected. Because when you're connected, your desire is going to change. You're not going to live like you used to. Our connection to the vine changes my wants, my want to. I start talking and thinking and dreaming about the eternal things, not earthly things. Because things changed in my life. If you're living connected, like uh, your priorities will be different. I, I'm sorry. I just I'd rather do this than anything. I don't know nothing I'd rather do than what I'm doing right now. I tell you often, I'm not the best, but the best you got tonight. My priorities change. Some of the stuff that I named there is not a sin. Some of that stuff's not, there's nothing wrong with some of that stuff. There's nothing wrong with going fishing. There's nothing wrong with taking a vacation a day or two off. I, I, didn't, I don't mean that. But your, your, your priorities will change. You know what me and Mama does when we go, we, well, I, don't mean, I can't even spell vacation. If we ever take a weekend off, you know what we do on Sunday morning? We hunt up a United Pentecostal church. That's what we do. Because why lay around in the motel? I wish we had. Because my priorities change. Now, Sunday afternoons, if I stay up to wherever it is I am, I'm at, and I usually don't, we may go around and ride, ride a Ferris wheel, ride a roller coaster. My money ain't going to do that. If I ride a Ferris wheel, I ride by myself. I rode a roller coaster with Mary Grace. She lied to me. She told me that thing didn't go upside down. <laughs> but it did. She got me on that crazy thing. But, but my priorities changed. My wants are different. My desires are different. But we have to stay connected. You know what a cell phone does? I wish I had I do that. You know what this thing does? It'll do nothing if it's not connected to the power. Right. It, my entire battery went down yesterday. The red lights come on. It was worthless. Right. You know what I did? I went home. I plugged it to the power cord. Right. You understand? Right. We can't do a thing. We can't do any more than that. this cell phone if we're not plugged up to the power cord. Right. And that being Jesus Christ. Amen. Being connected will always produce, always produce some kind of fruit of the Spirit. Right. Always. Uh, fruit is just natural. It's just as natural as apple pie and ice cream if you're connected. It's going to happen. Because if you're connected, you're going to love one another. You're going to treat one another right. You're going to have faith in God if you're connected. So fruit is just a natural, as natural as it can be, 
of a, of a healthy connection. When you see somebody filled with the fruit of the Spirit, you can say they have had a relationship with the true vine. I, I worked in the Yellow Creek nuclear plant. We was working way up in the air. They had this staircase that built. If you go down, circle, down, circle, then you, I'm sure you've seen them all the way down to the ground. Well, I was coming down it one day going somewhere, get some welding rods or something, and I heard, I heard someone quote scriptures down at the bottom of that staircase. And the closer I got, the more I listened and he was quoting from Revelation. When I got down there, he was cleaning up. He was a, a laborer. He was cleaning up some garbage, putting in some garbage cans. Tears were running down his cheek. And he was quoting from the Word of God. And I did not, didn't then, at, at that time I didn't, but now I can tell you he was connected. Somewhere he had made a connection. Bringing forth fruit is just lets you know there's a healthy connection somewhere to the truth. So let me ask you as we, I'm, I'm close. I know I, I told you I wasn't going to preach love. Sure, uh, Grace, uh, Goosey, you can come on up here, baby. Yes, I called you Goosey, right, come on. That's what the grandkids call him. I didn't really intend to, but I did. Uh, what kind of a fruit or what kind of a branch are we? Are we bearing fruit? Fruit of the Spirit. If not, then we must not be connected. Got to stay connected. Come around the front with me if you would and let's pray. Let's talk to the Lord for a few minutes. Hallelujah. Just come on around and or kneel where you're at. That's fine. In Jesus' name.